Pastor Bob is a friend of the church uh, for many years. Well, yeah, many years now. I think it's two years. <laughs> Yes, we've engaged with him and it's been a wonderful time just getting to know him. Those of you who are visiting, you'll get to love him after he speaks. So he's, <laughs> he's going to be sharing with us this, uh, this morning. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for my brother. I thank you, dear Lord, that you've spoken to him in the last few days concerning what he's to share with us today. Father, I pray that you'll anoint him, give him the right words to speak and give him the strength and the wisdom to share it without fear as he speaks to our souls and spirits. Thank you so much, Lord, for his presence here with us today, that he made it all the way from Nairobi to be with us today. Lord, we bless you as he as speaks to us, make our hearts uh, delight in hearing your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, my name is Pastor Bob, and um, I'm happy to be with you today. I have become a friend of this church, and uh, we're going to be, if the Lord tarries, in a journey and co-working together within the scope of beyond the strategic plan you're working on. That tells it's beyond five years. Amen. And um, I love Jesus Christ as my personal savior. I'm married to one lady, Helena Roberts. And between the two of us, we have three young children. Amen. Amen. And as we share the word before, we share the word. I want first to take an opportunity to register our gratitude and appreciation to Pastor Suji, Helen Suji, and the church and the Nealoni Ahaki group for coming at our home. I came from Akweni County, and the last, which Saturday was this? The Saturday of the second, second this month. We were laying to rest uh, the body of our late dad. And this church was represented, and it was a great moment just to, to see them. It was actually a surprise when I realized they were just in the Mindest. And it was so refreshing, Pastor and Mom Helen. And we, we want to say a big thank you in a very special way. On just the Lord using, using this church to be part of our support and encouragement. And um, we with a great moment, with a great moment, just going through the process of preparing and the burial. And for those of us, we have interacted. Um, uh, here and there. Actually, the day that died, I was in this church. We were doing a training. And back and forth, we had communication and people at home because they were rushing him to hospital. He had been just sick for a few days. And um, yeah, he died that day we were last year on the Saturday of 25th September. And God used that moment to do many new things since then. And after, after the burial, just being home and then coming back to Nairobi, going back home. And I would tell you that even in death, God can be glorified. Praise the Lord. And that is something we have seen. Just looking back, reflecting and um, seeing the faithfulness of the Lord in the, in the time we were with our late dad after the last day. And he rested in peace. He was born again. It is I who led him to the Lord. And um, 
Yeah, he lived for 73 years. And in those 73 years, the last three years were the most significant years to the kingdom of God and to the glory of the name of the Lord. Because of how he allowed himself to be used of the law just to usher in the family and in the community the plan and the, the master plan of God. Something we had waited and prayed for since December 2000. Can you imagine? Since December 2000, in a prayer meeting in the community, God had refused to us, those who were in the prayer meeting, had gone there with now the lady who is my covenant wife. We had gone there for a prayer meeting with University of Nairobi students because as I was in the university. And we had gone there for a prayer meeting for a whole week in that compound in the neighborhood. And part of the things the Lord refused to us that December 2000 were were touching on my father's family. And the role the family will play in the manifestation of the kingdom of God in the community and in our generation. And therefore, back and forth, we were able to pursue that over the years. It has been over 20 years, over the years, just studying and seeking the Lord and praying and waiting for fulfillment of things. And therefore, in the last three years of dad's life, he willingly gave himself to be part of that alignment and to usher in that manifestation. And therefore, as we went through the, that week he died and just the burial, to us as a family, it was a celebration. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, there's a loss and a pain which comes with that. But our greatest joy is when we looked back and see how that was just a fulfillment of something we had prayed and waited for for over 20 years. And seeing God is being, being glorified in that. And um, yes, yeah, we interact in coming days in our trainings. I'll be sharing bits and pieces of testimonies out of that event because it has come along with many new stories, many new testimonies, and the many new revelations as we connected the dots and see how the Lord has been so good and so faithful to us. Amen. Amen. And it has ushered him to us as a family, a new dispensation. Regist opened a new a new visitation and a new door in the kingdom of God's work. Amen. Amen. And therefore, all this is to say, Pastor C.G. Hell and the church, we are grateful for being part of, being used of the Lord to encourage us and to be with us that season. I got many calls, many messages from church members, and we want you to know we are grateful to be in use of the Lord, to be part of God's encouragement, God's comfort, and God's support to us. Amen. Amen. The other thing I want to say is um, relating with this church has been a great joy and seeing what the Lord is doing, including the tent, the new tent, really personally and Team members I represent here, my nuclear family and people we co-work together in Safina family, we, we are refreshed. Let me tell us, dear servants of God and brethren, the visitation of the Lord in this community is here with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the Lord is going to continue unfolding that in very unique and diverse ways. And also seeing our dear brother Stanley, I know you don't know me, 
but I'm happy to see you in church today. Yeah, I've known your wife Lucy, and um, we we thank God for just being here. The testimony you shared today, Amen. So we we in a good season from the Lord, and it is not a coincidence that we in the midst of planning and launching our new strategic plan as a church. And we are seeing new things. It is, it is part of that ordination from the Lord. And it has brought in new friends and partners, and I'm one of them. Amen. And I'm going to be around if the Lord tarries to see the fullness of the manifestation of what the Lord has begun this season. Amen. Amen. Pastor Bob, B.O.B. is banger of banks. We're looking forward to Christian banking. We're looking forward to Christian way of doing business. We're looking forward to a great representation of the kingdom of God out there in the marketplace. We're looking forward to, to that. It has begun in small ways and we're looking forward to see the fullness of all that. Amen. And uh, one, of the, one of the dreams, one of the visions we have from the Lord in, in the coming days and to be part of um, those who will be doing business in a Christian way, following biblical kingdom principles and uh, those who will be doing financial services and the non-financial services in a kingdom way within the context of the principles of the living word of God. And we are we excited about that. So today as we share about the word of the Lord, we're going to share, my main text is going to be where one of us read and I pray that the Lord is going to use this to refresh us in the book of Acts chapter number 19. Acts chapter number 19. If you have a Bible, please open your Bible in that book of Acts chapter number 19. And there are a few verses we are going to read together while standing. Amen. Amen. And as we do that, as we do that, probably to ask, how many of us here, I know we have some students in the house, but how many of us here are either in business or are working out there in the community? Let me see by show of hand. Yeah, we are quite a number. We are quite a number. And if we look at how we spend our days and our week, you realize to those of us who are working or doing business, uh, from Monday through maybe Saturday, others through Sunday, much of our time, we are out there. And as we share today, we're going to share around how we can become witnesses while we're still doing what we do there. Praise the Lord. So that by your being in business, by your working in school, by your doing consultancy, by your serving where you are employed, that same opportunity is a platform for you to represent the kingdom of God. And you don't need another separate time to serve the law. Amen. As you do that, as you serve, whether you're a business person, whether you're a community developer, you, whether you are an employee, whether you're an employer, whether you're in any institution out there outside the church, you utilize that moment as the opportunity, as the platform, as the springboard for you to serve the Lord. Amen. And I pray that as many as are out there, 
we will be able to connect with that grace. Amen. Let us stand as we read together a portion of Acts 19. And I want we read where we started, first number 11. We just read first number 11 through to first number 20. How many of us to go to Biblia? Let me see. Yeah, we are quite a number. But if you don't have a Bible, trust God to get a Bible. Amen. Actually, Biblia sikuizi, it's cheaper than some of the hairdos we have for the ladies. It's cheaper than some of the shoes we are wearing today. It's cheaper than some of the dressings we are wearing today to have a Bible. And when you have a personal Bible, there's a way to strengthen your faith as you read it at a personal level. Amen. Kwa wala mbatu kuna Biblia, at the count of three, kindly start from whichever translation you have. Acts chapter 19, first number 11 to first number 18. One, two, three. Okay, let's pause there. Thank you, our uh, dear sister. Those are able to read from the screen. Please look at the screen. And we can actually do better than that. Yeah? Yeah. The book of Revelation records multitudes of people and thousands shouting. So please read with some strength. Yeah, let's start. One, two, three, go. And God was doing extraordinary miracles at the hands of all of these, surrounded by the handkerchiefs and shepherds that had left his skin. Carried away by the sick, and that he was not as a healing of spirits came out of them. Certain sense of the Jewish exorcists. And I took to him mark the name of the Lord. Jesus, I know, and all my environments. And who are you? And the man in whom the spirits speak of them, and the master of all of them, and the power of them, so that I played out of that house naked. And wounded. And this became known to all the residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and the name of the Lord Jesus was extolled. Also, many of them came to one of the residents of Ephesus, and they invited to the Jews. The number of those who had practiced magic had spread the most together and found them in the sight of the whole world. I encountered the body of them and found in them 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord will teach you to increase and be made mighty. Amen. Let's skip a few verses and read verse 23 through to 26. 23 to 26. Let's continue. And Amen. Let us sit. This is Paul at a city by the name Ephesus. Ephesus, by the time 
this was being written or the record of these incidents, Ephesus was one of the one of the commercial senders then. One of the commercial senders. And uh, when we look at scripture, just from the book of Acts, I want to start by mentioning first two things. Acts chapter number one, first number eight. Acts one eight, scripture talks about us receiving power. Power to become something. To become what? Witnesses. Amen. And the witnessing which is mentioned there are uh, uh, several cities being mentioned from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And then, crossing over to Acts chapter number 8, which I want to read. Acts chapter number 8, verse number 1. The New King James says, Now Saul was consenting to his death. That is the death of Stephen. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So this is just to tell us that Part of how the early believers found themselves in the cities, it was out of persecution. It was not of their own making or choice or planning. It was out of persecution, a, a challenge. But as they went out running away from threats and persecution, they went sharing and testifying to what they knew, what they had experienced, and what they had seen in their personal lives. Amen. And uh, the best way to understand a witness as an introduction is from a judicial perspective. Kuna mtu kwa hii church hapa leo, amesha wai kuwa na kesi kotini. Kesi Kotini. Wow, yeah, they are there. Some of the places which give me a lot of distress <laughs> are free. Na moja ni kama na usika na mambo ya Kesi Kotini. It distresses me. Na ile ingine ni hospitali. Hospitali kama kuna mtu mgonjwa ama meandimitiwa. Na ile ingine ni police station. <laughs> Mambo ya police station. <laughs> they distress me. Lakini sasa tukirudi mambo ya kotini, one of the one of the simplest way for a ruling to be delivered in a court of law is when there is sufficient evidence. And the sufficient evidence in a letangwe kwa kesi na witnesses. Sawa sawa. Na wakati witness anaitajika kwa kesi, inamanisha kuna njambo, there is, there, there is something which is being contended against. There is a validation. Kuna mambo inaendelea na inaitaji kutimbitishwa. Kama ni kweli ama si kweli. And therefore a witness is required. And a witness comes in to give evidence. And based on the evidence, the court makes a ruling. Praise the Lord. And therefore, a true witness, because they are also false witnesses. And our Father in heaven, when you read scripture in the book of Revelation chapter 3, one of the titles God introduces himself with is being a true witness. Our Father in heaven is a true witness, and he expects us to be true witnesses. And therefore, 
a true witness comes in to make submissions based on one things they have seen not rumors things they have done what they have seen number two things they have heard walisikia kama wapo ona walisikia with their personal eyes that's a true witness and number three things they have touched nalo shika shika things they have touched and number four and the last things they know or they have experienced amen and therefore based on seeing touching knowing hearing and experiencing we can be witnesses in a court of law and therefore when now we bring that into the kingdom of god in the marketplace especially in a manisha apo inje ya church sokoni mali tunafanya kazi whether ni in the community ama ni kwa biashara ama umeajiriwa mahali kazini na that is where you spend much of your time monday through friday or saturday kuna mambo ambayo yanaendelea nga pale which don't honor the lord which don't praise and glorify the name of the lord na wale mnajua mambo ya biashara na based on this Acts chapter number 19 soko ya Ephesus it was a commercial city and there were many business activities happening in this market but one of the things about to honor from scripture in Acts chapter 19 ni kwamba kuna wafanyabiashara in this city ambao walikuwa wanatumia nguvu za shetani bana sifiwe i'm saying praise the lord amen and we have some market places where people use majinis jujus kamote dumba and all those things to do business <laughs> yeah and uh, i'll be sharing maybe if time allow a few testimonies and it's a real scenario in the marketplace i know places where you can go and hire a genie from 6 am to 6 pm uitumie tu siku moja umfanye biashara na urudishie wenyewe haitakaa kwa kwa izaanie huko lakini ukirudisha 6 or 1 pm unalipa a pay for another whole day ndio lazima uende mapema ili 6 ifike ukiwa kwa mwenyewe umrudishie <laughs> When we were preparing for the funeral meetings and the burial of our late dad I interacted with guys who were part of that kingdom and the charms Dumba wale mnajua Dumba and the Kamote I interacted with a few of them and they were bold to tell me yeah how they used them Hako anajua mimi ni pastor And that was actually an, an avenue God used to expose me to what they were coming to do because they are coming to to execute some demonic things and just by that confession it actually got me to be spiritually alert and helped a number of things because I was on ground throughout the the entire week and a few days and therefore in the marketplace in the organization where many of us work there are some claims claims ya kwamba hawezi kuwa umeokoka na ufanye biashara safi bila uongo bila magendo bila kuongana there are those claims out there bana sifiwe amen there are claims hawezi fanya kazi vizuri na kazi yako ipendeze mkubwa na upate 
rewards na promotion bila jia ya mkato there are those claims out there praise be to the lord Amen. there are claims out there ya kwamba huyu mungu wa wa kristo anachelewangwa kuonekana kuwa prosper kwa mambo ya biashara And those claims need witnesses like us. When they will send me la hasha mimi ni mmoja wao mimi ni mkristo na najua Mungu wetu anaweza kutuonekania kwa kazi na kubariki kazi ya mikono yetu. Kwa sababu umeona umeshuhudia na ume experience that. And you can come boldly to tell people actually god blesses the work of our hands god is able to prosper us amen because of those claims out there there's a lot of idolatry in the marketplace a lot of sexual immorality in the marketplace such that even in the corporate world while I'm about they work in the corporate world one of one of my one of my younger brothers is a banker and has been in the banking industry for several years and uh, it helps me or now because of the networks they have and how they work how just a ceo a chief executive officer in the banking industry and in in some of the serious corporation in this country and in africa is a continent would not come to lead an organization based on their academic knowledge qualification and the excellency alone they would need spiritual power and authority and the many of them bring witch doctors in the office and others go to where the witch doctors are even if it's in a rural village kwa msitu they do that because they have realized for you to to succeed you just don't need competence qualification experience and a good strategic plan you need some spiritual power some spiritual authority so as our in the marketplace and therefore with all that happening left right and center as a believer you can come out to correct those allegations and those claims and i will be referencing this passage and as we share this i want to bring to our attention only three things that for us to operate effectively and be witnesses out there in the marketplace we would need power praise the lord amen and number two we would need presence and number three, we would need purpose power simtajizo zingine again purpose we would need that and for this power to be available to us because the power is what gives us the confidence the courage the boldness and the ability to stand our ground even on an evil day bana sifiwe that power has to be an outflow from our personal relationship with God how we relate with God how we know mambo ya prayer and fasting how we know the word all those are areas we able to draw power to help us to stand our ground and serve and be witnesses there and be able to tell people unaweza fanya kazi bila kuongana Unaweza fanya biashara bila kamote na majini na ifaulu. And 
unaweza Mungu anaweza linda biashara yako. Wachawi wakuje washindwe kuiroga na wezi wakuje washindwe ku break into that business. Amen. Amen. One of the testimonies <laughs> which allowed my late dad to to submit to be used of the Lord to be used to allow now to be a gate for kingdom things is the witness he saw comparing what God can do and what the other kingdom can do. My dad and my great grandparents, Kabla and Daddy Okoke, they've been deep in the other world. To them, nothing would happen if there's no sacrifice, if there's no some idol worship, if there's no going to see a witch doctor or an abi in the other kingdom. Sawa, sawa. They'll do that. Nah. Yeah, they did several things without my knowledge. So this one particular day, 2017 October, Waliletam Mojawao in the compound. Now walikuwa na mleta ili, yeah, like a, a, a sia, a nabi. Awa ombe, na, yeah, awa ombe ni nini na inasumbua watoto flani ama, ni kwa nini mambo flani ya yendelei vizuri. Na awa ombe na watoa sandaka. Iyo otu wangi willingly mnakubaliana bei. <laughs> Mapema. <laughs> <laughs> so when he came into the compound, they sat together. We were not there with my family. And he bought a kanza. Na alikuwa mewapatia mpangilio vile itanda. Ataanza kuwambia mambo ya the first born, the second born, the third born. Wakifuatana mpaka wa misho. Na baada wakamalizia na wazazi. Na ibada ishe. So he did the first, ya mambo ya first born and jami yake. Mambo ya second born na jami yake. Na sasa mimi ndi ya third born. Mbanda sifiwe. Na ikawa uyu mtu wa mungu ili court. Yale mambo wana waambia ni facts. Yale ni mambo wana yu ni ukweli kulingana na wawo. But the source is the other kingdom through divination. Sawa sawa. Now why they brought this man home. Kwa maana walikuanga wanaendanga huku kutafuta mambo yetu na huku waionekani mimi yangu na jami yangu. So kajua kimleta kwa boma labda ataona, ataingia kwa randa ya kinjami, atuone vizuri. Na ataje mambo ya Pastor Bob, Elena Roberts, Melchizende, Crown Bank, Favor Siva Mudeu. So, wakati alikuja akaingia the third born, those who are in that family service wananiambianga hivu. Uyo mtu wa mungu kwanza alishtuka, wakaona ameshtuka. Na lipo shtuka, akawa je kama maneno itoki. So suddenly, aliamuka kwa hile kiti alikuwa mewekewa ya kuwani na akakimbia. Na akikimbia, tulu, yale maneno ya nisikika, akisema akikimbia. Wamesikira, wamesikira, wamesikira. Hakaanda, kwa hivu hata sandaka haku upewa. <laughs> Ibada ikaisha. <laughs> and as dad and mom and those who I don't reflected on that, because this was a senior, respected person who people would refer others to. Wakati dad and mom wale on iyo, they knew deep in their heart. Kamano wale kuwa na pinga mambo ya wakofu na kukata mambo ya wakofu. They knew what we stood for and they believed was superior than what those guys represented. Praise be to the Lord. Amen. They knew that that day. Now, Wakati, that is 2017 October. December when we met at home for the family meeting. For the first time, Daria litangazia njami yote. Kutoka leo, Pastor Bob atakuwa mchungaji wa njami na mchungaji wangu kama baba wa njami. Na akatacha mambo mengine mazuri ambaye ni mtukuza mungu. Bana sifiwe. Amen. And that was a major turnaround of things. In, not just in the family, but in the community. 
Praise be to the Lord. Amen. Now, being a witness needs for us to have something valid, something which can be submitted as an evidence against a claim, against a rumor, or against an allegation. Banas, if you will. Amen. Yeah, got a family set up and our family relationship. Na mbienga watu mimi sina mpango wa kando. Na sina mtoto wa komali. Na mtu angejitokeza aseme uyu ni mtoto wa Robert. Haita lishtua. Na sema tufuata all due process. Kutolewe evidence. Eba na sifiwe. Eh. And when it comes to the power of the living God. We see when Paul and Tim got into this city, several things were happening. And one of us read about the sons of Sceva. They came in to do ministry based on not a personal experience, not a personal witness. Walekua nafanya mambo kwa jina ya nani? Paulu anaubivu. Sawa, sawa. And if you are a true witness, dear servants of God, you come and make submission of what you know, what you have experienced, what you have touched, or what you have heard or seen. Utoangi evidence as a witness ya kusema, nilisikia brother haya, iya na likuwa on ground na leona. You can't be a true witness through that, such an arrangement. Kwa hivyo kama ni kazi na biashara wa itaji ukue, unaamini na unajua mungu anaweza kukusaidia kwa kazi yako, anaweza kuilinda, anaweza kukupromote. Na anaweza hata ukiingia kwa shida, anaweza kukutafutia njia na zaidi ya kupeneema. In that challenging moment. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm about to come on, Brother Martin, I'm about to come on. I'm not a trained teacher, but I have some grace to teach. Na kwa sababu hiyo, kwa ufunuo wa neno la mungu. Mimi watoto wale ni mefundisha privately. They don't fail exams. Ile, ile ya within our structures. They can't fail. How now? Because it's, it's a grace. Our last bond. I don't know whether you, you, you can remember is the one who read the Yolonji. Who is the man 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 who is the for many, many days, many months, without nobody knowing. Until now, time in Asia, na, yeah, that was interested with results. Ni wanapeana matokeo. Yeah, and walikuwa always na juamali watatafuta namba yaki. From the other upside down. But this guy, when we realized that, we went and sat down with him. And I shared, I remember I just shared a scripture from the book of Proverbs and prayed and spoke over his mind and the entire faculty and system. Wale mko secondary school na soma baolo njini wangapi yapa? Eh? They are in school. They are not here, but you can remember part of your baolo how the mind and the brain operates and some of the key locations in, in the brain, the hypothalamus, and all that coordinates things through the central nervous system. We spoke to that hypothalamus. Ikafunguka na kapenda shule. Because hizi vitu ziliomba na mungu na usikia sauti ya mungu. Bana sifiwe. Na lipo rudi shule amesoma mfululizo. Mbaka when we finished, he finished actually this, this year August. And uh, I have privately tutored Pupils and students from Dandora community in a few schools, and all of them passed their exams. And I know deep within me 
Mimi hata nikiwa university ile exam niliambiwa nimeanguka nilikataa. Na nikaa pili kuwa remarked. Bana sishiwe. E nikaa pili ikuwa remarked and they had to do that. Because nikienda hata kama si kuwa na sufficient time ya ku prepare for the exams how does for God's grace and mercy na kule nile rega rega ni natubu na ninapata msamaha na naomba na naombea my answer sheets kabla ni submit na Mungu azielekeze nipate neema na kibali kwa hivyo wewe kuingilia niweke madhokodhania na jua hapo we can appeal <laughs> bana sifiwe yeah and therefore by knowing the lord hata kama uko shule wanafunzi wako wanaweza pita mtiani because you know god created the body systems and the faculties you know that and you believe that and therefore you can speak life to them and a realignment to the academic purposes bana sifiwe ukiwa kwa biashara because of being a witness wala ambao kama watu wanasema let me just read this verse inasema hivi verse 23 and about that time there arose a great commotion about the way for a certain man named Demetrius a silver smith who made silver shrines of Diana Diana was the, the main chief goddess brought no small profit to the craftsmen he called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said men you know that we have our prosperity by this trade you know that we are what usidhani mambo ya sako na association na trade unions zilianza wakati wetu hata wakati huo walikuanga na they they used to relate wale mko kwa biashara ya aina moja walikuanga na a structure to put them together kama sako kama an association kama a club so huyu jamaa wao walikuwa katika biashara ya kutengeneza some of the tools which businessmen would buy and go and they use as shrines or altars of worship in their businesses ili wapate nguvu ya kimashetani na upako wa kimashetani wa kunawiri kwa biashara Sawa sawa. So they would make those shrines. So wakati Paulo na wenzake walitembea huo mjini hata mapepo sokoni walijua kumekujwa. Na lipojua essentially there was some commotion. And this person says a number of people submitted things which they were using or that other kingdom to be burned. And one of us read it was first number 19 up on Misho it totaled 50000 pieces of silver if you you look at this in the paraphrased translation kama kuna mtu ako na new living bible translation ama the messenger the the passion translation na uangalie uko portion ya at 19 first number 19 Misho it's quite a uh, a big fall in monetary terms sawa sawa so they submitted those things to be to be burnt sikachomo na as paul continued to do this they actually changed the atmosphere of the marketplace and people who are using demonic powers and the charms started losing business bona sifiwe because the power Paul and team carried subdued their power and suffocated it na baadaye wakishuhudia wanasema hivi first number 26 moreover moreover you see and they hear that not only at Ephesus but true how almost all asia this paul has persuaded and turned away many people saying that they are not 
gods which are men with hands. Verse 27. So, not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and their magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. So it was shaking presence here. Paul and team. Now, Kumbuke chapter number 18. Paul had partnered with Priscilla and Aquila in tent making business. So the guy was active in business. Sawa, sawa. When you go back to Acts chapter number 17, from verse 16, 17, and 18, he would be in the marketplace daily. Reasoning with guys who are there in business because he was also in business. Paul Kubiri na kufanya biashara zilikuwa zinaambatana pamoja. Bana sifiwe. Amen. And looking at chapter 18, chapter 19, there are days one time he used a school, a Tirana school, just to do many things in that school for two years. And therefore, we see why we need power because the marketplace is heavily manifested with demonic powers of the other kingdom. Sawa sawa. And it's now in every sector. In any sector of our economy, there is a good representation of demonic powers and these worship and the sacrifices which happens in all the sectors of our economy. Kwevo Kama, you will be there working or doing business as a believer. If you don't have power, mambo yako yata stagnate. Mambo yako yata kwama. Na utapata temptation ata wewe ya kuendea juju which would not be good. Amen. Amen. And therefore, as you read scripture, as you pray, ask the Lord to give you the ability and the power and bio ata ukiwa naendesha ngari kwa barabara. You are under the canopy of God's glory. You are under the pillar of the cloud of God which guided the Israelites in the wilderness. And that pillar of cloud was to show the way, but also to provide a favorable environment in the desert for them. And in the night, it will be the pillar of fire. And you can operate under such. Ata ukiwa kwa barabara, mungu anafunika garilako by that cloud, where that cloud of fire, the pillar, and make you invisible to the demonic powers and demons which are operating in places we call black spots. Ikiwa mnaweza pita hapo na ionekani, mapepo ya likuona ukiwa ngambo la china wajuu lipitaji hai, waliona gari yako imepita. Because you were under cover of a cloud and the presence of the Lord. And you know and believe the Lord is able to do that. Amen. Amen. As a witness. And Paul knew this. The demons knew this. And even these other guys of the other kingdom who were exercising spirits, they also knew the God of Paul. And you can serve and operate in such a, a wavelength as a witness in the marketplace. The second thing I want to mention is presence. Let me tell us, being a witness in the marketplace needs two levels of presence. Presence ya mungu ambayo na watlisha na presence yako in person. Amen. All the marketplaces, Paul and Tim, turned around. They appeared there. Life and in person. Awa kuwanga wanatumana ama wanakutana church 
na kuomba maombi kashungulikia mambo kitengela ama huko kinani ama mlolongo they would go on ground in person bana sifiwe that is what paul would do and the team marketplace in attacker your presence the ministry of presence hata kama unaombanga maombi ya kutumana siku inakuja uhitajike mahali unafanyianga kazi na biashara uleta Mungu hapo kwa hiyo biashara na we ukuu hapo na Mungu kwa hiyo biashara kila siku bana asifiwe na inajulikana sokoni you are on ground amen, amen. presence ya god na presence yako kama witness because that is what scares the presence of the other powers there's no fatum they can occupy and when you are on ground as a witness of the kingdom because being a witness we say it gives us an ability to have seen to have heard to have touched to have known or to have experienced kuna mambo utaona na Mungu ayatumie through the way he speaks to us aku expose vitu ambazo aungajua na kuona kama hauko kwa ground sawa sawa like being on ground during that time of the funeral meetings and all that we personally as a pastor and as a servant of the lord i went with a spiritual high and um uh, because of what god had allowed that to do for the glory of his name i knew if the enemy got an opportunity he would reactivate things we had closed in the yester years i knew that deep in my heart and therefore this is what happened by being on ground some of the things some engines and the workers of evil were sent to do in the compound they found me on ground and a few of them confessed about it and they felt frustrated by my being there and therefore process ya ya mazishi na nini zisi we we i was chairing the team the the team which was planning for that and we did it as sons just the sons in the family were the committee atuku atuku form committee ya kuita watu na tukufanya fundraising ama kuitisha watu pesa So we did it the sons when he daddy daddy in the hands of the sons they took him to the mortuary and we went to receive his body from the mortuary we carried the body we laid the body to rest the sons did that and I was leading that process as a pastor and there was a deliberate reason to that bana sifiwe because his dead body and even the the grave itself the process ya kuchimba grave mchanga and all that all those who are having news the enemy was looking for to reactivate things which used to happen before that converted into christianity so it was a total closed system by being present chakula ikipikwa nini everything because guys were moving around like fortress wakitafuta nafasi waweke vitu and we were there on ground on their lot wake up early in the morning late in the night and they would feel frustrated so out of the frustration some of them started confessing how we have made things difficult they don't know this barrio is going to happen kwa maana hakuna committee hawajui kunaendelea nini wamesikia masishi ni saturday second they felt so frustrated hajui kama watu watakula hawajui mwili iko wapi and they would express that and some of them they would, they would now in my presence confess how they are used in dumba those of us who know kawo to do things in the past like in sahi ifanyi inashindikana bana sifiwe amen and your presence with the lord where you work and where you do getting in you can become a prophet 
of your workplace. To know you are there with God and the presence of God can scare off the demons and the evil spirit. Amen. Amen. And you can deliberately even speak it out that you are coming to your business, you are coming to your workplace in the name of Jesus. Mm. The name above every other name. The name by which scripture says all things, whether powers, principalities, authorities, rulers, living, non living, visible, invisible, were created by him and for him. That is Colossians chapter 1, verse number 16. And therefore, they submit to that name. It's a name which Philippians chapter 2 says, it is known in heaven and dear on earth. And therefore, you have come there in your workplace, in your business. You are opening the doors in and by that name. You are closing at the end of the day your business or your office in the name of the Lord or by that name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, nata ukite ukute days you go into place ukute kumechoro mstari damu imemwagwa ama kuna funny funny weird things you will not get scared and go back home. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So when you're on ground, you're present, you're able to see some activities and through the activities and things, God can use that as an avenue to tell you what operates in that market. The spirits in the market, the wicked people, the engines of the kingdom of darkness by being on ground. And then your presence, which is something worthy to measure, is whatever product you offer or service, Pray for it, speak for it, so that even your clients and your consumers, as they get your products and your services, they can experience a difference which they don't get when they consume and defeat products and services of your competitors. Bwana yes, as if you will. To be sure why you mikate na peremente na candles na donuts in a community in Dandora, and uh, yeah, we would pray for the the baker, would pray for the ingredients, would pray for the product every single day. And as they went into the market, people would, would be able to tell a difference of the products which were from the, the church-owned business and the products from other businesses. And there are people, Sikuila, Twitter, Pika, Mandazi, and Donuts, they would not eat donuts. <laughs> and they would tell. We have even sold hair time, credit as he mutu hair time. Now to at one asaba kuna out of forty credit yet with nakaranga sana kwa sing. Una kunya magi to imagine and there are many brands. Una ski na u ina kuisha and then a ku refresh. Ukinya gine, una rea to una skio meka u kiw. I've sold kerosene in a marketplace where there were petrol stations and people would cross over leaving the petrol station to come to the outlet. Now, I've seen a pump now that I've been able to get the longolo, the those measuring pumps. Would cross over and I've been able to get kerosene. I've been able to get out of my own bed and I've been able to get out of my Inakuwa ni mafuta na inakuwa inaleta nuru ya ufaume ule tunawakitisha. Umana tuliko tumeitangazia hivyo. Amen. And that is part of actually the commodity we used to, to push away darkness from my father's compound. Because it was a dark, it was a dark family in the years. Yeah. Tunawazia mafuta. Wawo na joni biyashara, mbe yetu ikopoa, na ikujia Nairobi, lakini kwetu ni biyashara, na kusukuma ngiza ya uganga na uchawi kwa nyumba. Ikiwaka imewaka. Bana asifiwe. Amen. Ya unaanza kupoteza nguvu, unaanza kuishiwa na nguvu na juu, asifanyi kazi. Unatoroga atorogegi. Unashindo kwa nyawa watu ni wainagani. And therefore, be a witness by being present and present with the Lord. And my last point was what? Purpose. Purpose. Knowing you're in the marketplace as a witness, you are there not just to do business, but to do ministry. The purpose is clear. And people can testify of that. 
people can do what? Testify of that. Wewe unajua uko kwa kazi ile unafanyanga hata kama wewe ni mwalimu. You are there not to teach watoto wapite but to unlock destinies through those children. To unlock potentials through those children. To use the children as conduct points to declare the kingdom of God in the families they represent. Na wewe unakuja shule unajua tunasomesha na titamati. Na wewe unajua unasomesha mtoto fulani lakini uko na umuhimu na umaana wa kumtumia kama mwanafunzi kufikia jamii ya kwa. And you know that. Bana sifiwe. Amen. Unajua unauza product kama maji kama hii lakini tu si maji unauza. Unajua hii ni conduct point ya kufikia wenye wanatumia hiyo product or service pamoja na network ya watu wao kupitia kwa biashara yako you know the purpose amen, amen. you know akikupatia pesa kununua what you sell and you offer in the marketplace unajua tu hiyo pesa inaweza kuwa a medium to speak prophetically to the economic way of life. Waendelee kuna wiri na kutajirika na waendelee na kuleta hiyo pesa kwako na ikileta kwako pia itafika kanisani na kwa kazi ya Bwana. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you know you have a purpose, business, but ministry because you are witness. And you know God can use any substance, any product, any service as a conduct point to reconcile people with himself because you are there as a kingdom ambassador. Amen. Praise be to the Lord. Amen. My first my first work when I left the university nilikuwa I finished uh, my last paper like uh, today and uh, I traveled tomorrow and the following day I felt myself for work in a business. Nilienda nikaambia mwenyewe biashara mimi nimekuja and I went with a with a draft of my contract. <laughs> because of the conviction I had. Nikaambia mwenyewe biashara ni mtu alikuwa a politician in the Kanu Heran days and a rich man. Nikamwambia nimekuja na nataka nikufanyie kazi kwa hii biashara yako. And something I had not known, kumbi that time it was a low season for his business. So actually he needed some, some value addition in it. Na nikamwambia, mimi nataka kukufanyia kazi kwa hii biashara yako, nataka ni kufanyia kazi kwa miezi mitatu. Na kwa hiyo miezi mitatu, auta nilipa, mita jitua kukufanyia kazi, na kwa hiyo miezi mitatu, tuta increase profits kwa kiwango hiki ni kamupatia percentage. Na tuta increase sales volume kwa percentage ni kamupatia number. Na tuta reduce operating costs kwa kiwango hiki ni kamupatia another percentage. Ni kamuambia with those three indicators, increasing sales volume, increasing profits, and reducing costs, tutafanya hivo within three months. Na ikisha fanyika hivo, this is how much you will pay me for the three months. And I was asking him each month 30,000, so it would be around 90,000 for the three months. And that was 2002. Mm -hmm. And the guy looked at me, a young boy, who me took a juicy. No, you have a don't you? Yes, I can do this thing. Let me start to deliver for three months. So he agreed because there was no loss on his head. Now, come matu, tachi, vayo, mambo matatu, he was not to pay me. So there was no loss on his end. Sawa, sawa. So we engaged with the guy for three months. And at the end of the three months, we had exceeded all the marks I had given him. The percentage is their sales volume, their profit, their cost. Kulikuwa tume, toko zaidi kuliko vile ni muambia. And the guy looked at me. He a young man, 2002. But he had 90,000. And the money was there because we meant it. And he said that was a lot of money for a young boy. <laughs> it was a lot of money. 90,000 for a young boy. 
ambao umetoka university njuzi hata hata haja graduate na resort asijatokea na hii biashara imefanya bwana sifiu and that was his main interest and he refused to pay me that money said me just give me 30000 which will translate to 10000 for every month i worked for him i felt disappointed but i got the 30000 and left what he never knew he never knew uh, the password and the grace to that turn around it took another three months for it to crash and by the time it crashed i'd already engaged with another businessman he came for me i refused he wanted to sell the entire business to me he come on be you cheated me and i can't give you a second chance <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, that's what i told you it felt like yeah some arrogance but it's just because he did not honor that but my first assignments in employment mimi niliendanga na contract yani nime design employer tu tunakubaliana na ana sign ikiwa hivyo atanilipa isipokuwa atanilipa and that is how i started to work and let me tell us since 2002 Because I'm a believer and I believe the Lord as a witness. So long as I'm in stable health, hata kama I'm unwell and under treatment or medication, but I can function and my mind is sober and sound. Mimi nasemanga hivi, nasikuringa. Bwana sifiwe. Uwezi niambia kazi imeisha. Hata ile niko nayo kisha leo, kesho naamka nikienda kazi. Twaleona watu wa Mungu. Amen. My working days and hours will will end when I transition from this body. Amen. When I transition my spirit goes back to the maker, there's a time mimi nitaacha kufanya kazi. Hakuna ati economy ni mbaya, kuna tamaki na tamalo. You can work up going to work. And because of who you want the purpose you represent, hata kama ni kuchoma mind, hata kama ni kuwa anani in a house I've ever been a nanny in a house in Kiwa University. One of the long holidays, I went to avail myself to be a nanny to a family. Ambao alikuwa anatafuta nanny. And since we were out for a long holiday, ikamwambia mimi huyo hapa, nitaosha nguo, nitakulishia mtoto, nitamuosha na utakuta mambo iko sawa. And I did that. And you know what? God used that to do that family to do a miracle to me. Because I did some good work which they had to